Hi everybody, it's uh, Rob here from uh, heatengineer.com. Um, just got another little um, training video of a new tool uh, that we've had out for a couple of weeks now. Uh, a few people have asked if we could uh, do a little uh, little video on it. And it's basically our radiator sizing tool, which we know this is um, synonymous with uh, real problems, especially uh, now the fact that we're all trying to quite rightly go down to uh, lower temperature systems, um, which is good, so lower flow and return temperatures. So if we um, go into uh, our um, completed reports here, we'll just we'll pick something at random here. This is an old uh, survey that I did. Look at this, it's a doctor's surgery. If we go right the way through to the end of this um, um, report that we've done, you can see we want this particular report. I mean, again, another just to highlight how how important this is to to understand about heat loss calculations. You can see it's quite a quite a vast. Uh, doctor's surgery this one like with quite a lot of few rooms um, within it and yet we've only got just under 12 kilowatts of heat requirement um, in this whole property and say so we're giving watts per square meters etc but current radiators um, something that um, um, is very very difficult to people to understand and people to to get these correct um, one of the biggest things is obviously getting all the paperwork from various radiator suppliers etc etc at different flow temperatures now EN442, I think as many people would understand now, doesn't work on flow temperature. It works on what is called mean water temperature. So if you had a flow temperature of 75 and a return temperature of 65, then your mean water temperature would be 70 degrees. So very important to understand that when you're sizing radiators. But if we look down at our list here, we've got a current radiator list. Now this is where I think this is um, this is quite ingenious. What we're going to do is a little bit of playing around that, that we can do. Let's just um, let's just delete these um, out of the way for the moment, and we can uh, we can start again. Now, what we've done uh, to any users that have been with Heat Engineer for some time, this column was not added. So this was a column that was added from the emitters and performance page, which is previous um, to this. So we now know that we've got that's what the heat requirement is for this particular room. And if we go down and find something a little bit higher, let's have a look and see what we've got um, down here. Yeah, it looks like it's one of the biggest rooms anyway, so there's not a lot of heat, not a lot of heat loss. Here. We've got 861 there for a meeting room. Let's try that meeting room. We're on the meeting room. That, that, that'll do. So we've got a total requirement of 861 um, watts, sorry, 0.8 kilowatts, or nearly 0.9 kilowatts. Now, most people now, because we're running at lower temperatures, um, in fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to this top one so we can actually see all of this data here. You can see we put this disclaimer about the uh, mean water temperature up, up, up here, so it just gives you that understanding um, of, uh, of, of, of what, is, uh, what is going on here. Um, so let's choose this treatment room. Um, let's just get rid of that radiator there for the moment. Now most people now are sizing radiators aesthetically, especially when you want to start running into flow temperatures like this um, that, that, that we've got highlighted. Now each radiator under EN442 will give a certain amount of output at these temperatures, and these are these mean water temperatures. So you can calculate out for yourselves what is going on there, but it's we've gone to the sort of painstaking um, uh, work of actually inputting all this data so we now got this data for every radiator that is recognized by EN442. So if we say we've got a heat requirement of 908 watts here, we now, you can add up to six radiators per room. So if we're, if we're installing uh, radiators aesthetically as opposed to what the output is, we might have a window opening um, in a bay or something along those lines and it might be I don't know, 1300 millimeters long by, and we've got a room for a 700 mil high radiator. Now that might be the only radiator that we've got in the room uh, or the only position that we've got in the room. So we want to just try and get the biggest radiator we can within that area. So if we click on radiator type and we go into the different types that we've got, now we all know what these are, but again, we've got all of the various cast iron radiators that, that, that uh, around from the Beestons or the Cranes. Um, let's just go down here and let's pick a uh, let's, let's pick a K2 radiator. So you can see it starts to populate at that point there. If we get our height, let's just see if we can get 700 millimeters in there. That's that our, our measurement suits. So we get 700 millimeters in there. We said we had 1300 long. So if we allow for some valves, 
we said we'll go we'll put a radiator in there of 1200 um, millimeters and type that into the software you can see now it just takes a bit of time and it calculates out exactly what we want now we can see that at different flow temperatures these are the outputs in watts that we are going to get and you have to make yourself an engineering decision on what you're going to do in that scenario now to my mind the only thing that you can do to cover yourself in there is to run that flow temperature at 50 degrees which is really good or mean water temperature sorry at 50 degrees which is going to give you that heat loss that you require and you can then balance the radiator down with IMI hydronics eclipse valves or, or, or any variable orifice valve that you can do I think this is um, quite an important um, exercise to use but again if there's other areas in the room so there's another another wall where we could fit um, I don't know let's 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 uh, let's argument uh, let's let's put a standard thousand or six hundred uh, k2 in something like that so if we add another k2 and we put a 600 mil high in this time and we put a thousand in you got to type in the type in the lengths oh sorry I didn't click on this type in the lengths for that click on that give it a couple of seconds and that will populate so we now know that if with two radiators in there at 908 watts that we need we could actually run two radiators and we could drop the flow temperature down to 40 mean water temperature so this is an excellent tool and I think this is just a very short video just to do this but again you can add up to six radiators so you can go smaller and smaller and smaller um, to try and get your output um, to what you want at running at these low temperatures and of course once we start running at low temperatures our boilers go into condensing mode if you're working on gas but if you're now starting to get, to get in towards heat pumps then that is very very important that you that, that you get this um, so and heat pumps we're going to be down 35 and 40 aren't we so you know again we'd be looking at adding another radiator if that was the case for for uh, for heat pumps so i hope you enjoy the video um, and if you do uh, like um, and uh, subscribe and um, pass it on to uh, to all your colleagues many thanks